Hello guys, I'm Emily and in this video I would like to show you how I turned this Playmobil Bowman into a hunter from World of Warcraft. At first I'm removing everything that's possible and then also the impossible, which takes a little while. It's Diamond City Radio! Look at this! This looks like some chocolate sprinkles! When the shape of the figurine looks as basic as possible, I am sanding it with very fine sandpaper to make the surface smooth and to remove the glossy protective layer of plastic. I washed it with water to remove the dust and now I am cleaning the figurine with alcohol to remove my fingerprints. Finally, I can start sculpting. As usual, I am starting with sculpting the basic shapes first, usually it's body features, but this time it's the bottom layers of armor, like the knees, chest piece and the belt. For shaping I am usually using just this plastic knife and the silicone brush, and then making it smooth with water and my finger. This time I'm going to sculpt the hair as well, so I fill up the opening on his head with aluminum foil and fix it with the leftover epoxy sculpt. While the first layers of epoxy sculpt are drying, I am starting to work on the bow and wings. For both of them I drew the sketch first, made a wire skeleton and then sculpt over the wire. In order to get the shape as accurate as possible, at some point I just covered my sketch with a plastic file and sculpted it over the sketch. Right now I'm not trying to get a nice smooth form, I will let the base dry, become stable to add more material where it's needed. Now I can return to the armor. I am adding a fresh layer of epoxy sculpt on top of the knees, shaping it and then using the plastic knife to draw the lines. Then I am adding plates to the shoes, the second layer of the chest plate and the bottom layers of the shoulder plates that are visible just on top. From time to time I am sanding sculpted parts before applying the next details, because in the first place it's easier to sand them piece by piece and also because it's allowing me to see the mistakes as early as possible and fix them by applying some more sculpting material or cutting the excess.
From the point of sculpting, this is my most difficult project yet. But I am honestly starting to feel myself more confident about what I am doing. Who knows, maybe if I continue in this tempo, I will become capable to make my own ball joint doll from scratch. Back to our current project. For the arm pieces, I decided to sculpt over the figurine itself and not make them undressable, because nobody is going to undress him anyways, so why not? The armor on the sides is quite tricky because there is not so much space between the arm and the hip, so I have to make the armor piece flatter than the original one. When the side armor dried, I figured out that the arm is barely passing over it. So I am also cutting some plastic from the inside of the arm. There has to be at least 1 mm gap in between the details, otherwise the arm will scratch the paint from the armor and ruin all of the looks. For making the shoulder plates, I am using the same trick as for base of the bow and wings. Sculpting the details on top of the foil, letting them dry and then fixing them in place using the fresh epoxy sculpt as a glue. When these are dry and solid, I am adding more features on top as usual. The ponytail I sculpted in advance and now I am just fixing it on his head and adding some more hair so it looks more natural. After I have sculpted the bow, I decided to split it apart and use an actual Playmobil handle for it that will fit perfectly in his hand. I sew the handle off of a bag and then correct the form of it with a knife. After sanding it, I am marking the place where the bow parts will be attached and drill holes there.
To build all of the parts of the bow together, I'm using the same technique as for building the shoulder plates for the classic mage. So check out that video also if you haven't seen it yet. Cha chong Upper part of the wings I simplified a bit, so instead of three layers I am making one solid piece. I think this is reasonable because it would be barely visible in such a small detail and a little spoiler, because I need a thicker bottom of the wing to be able to fix feathers in there. But this will come as a final touch after painting the wall thing. Before painting, I washed away all of the dust with water and cleaned the surface with alcohol, then sprayed the figurine with a primer for plastic. Now I am painting all of the colored plastic parts with white acrylic paint, because the character will be dressed in white clothes. I applied over 6 layers of tinned up acrylic paint, to make sure that there will be no brush traces on the surface. When it looks acceptable, I am applying all of the basic colors, like this mix of the white and ochre for the yellow metal parts. Dark grey for the belts, shoes, clothes, collar, etc. Light grey for the silver parts and light blue for the gems. When all of the basic colors are set, I am adding special effects using the washing and dry brushing techniques. To learn more about washing and dry brushing, Please check my other video where I was painting the Christmas village. That video is just about painting, so I had much more time to show and tell about techniques in detail. For this particular figurine it's important to start applying additional effects starting with the smaller details like gems, because it will be easier to cover the mistakes if you by accident touch yellow part with blue paint, when the yellow part has just one color. When I am done with painting, I am sealing it with semi-gloss lac and only then dry brushing the golden parts with golden acrylic paint. Applying the golden ornament Dry brushing the silver parts and painting the silver details
And finally fixing the base of the wings and coming to my favorite part, making the wings out of the real feathers. For this I am using this strong and long kind of feathers. To make them stronger, at first I am covering them with decoupage lac or mod podge glue, or at least the part that I am going to use. When the lac is dry, I can freely cut the feathers in form and glue them to the base one after another. To make the wings look more like one thing, I am applying more luck to fill up the gaps and make the connection stronger. It looks already epic, but not enough. It's time for the glowing paint. For the best effect, I am applying a very thick layer of the glowing paint on all of the blue parts and few layers of paint to the wings. First one from the middle of the wing to the tip and each next layer starting lower and lower to get a glowing gradient. Done! Now let's go to a dark room to check out how it glows. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, please subscribe to this channel to not miss any other cool tutorials I am working on. Thanks for watching!